My name is Alexa Bleskis, not Dan Haycox, as the program implies, so I'm not talking about German firebombing campaigns. Instead, I'll be talking about probiotics, and more importantly, I'll be asking the question, how useful are probiotics as an alternate treatment for disease of the gastrointestinal tract? Now, before I begin the meat of this essay, I need to firstly get some definitions out of my way. I first need to state that none of the pictures in this project are produced by me and the probably other parties that I will reference in my bibliography are accept this presentation, so if any of you think I'm fraudulent, then please look that up. But human flora. Now, the human flora is probably one of our most important non-reference organs that we have in our body. Rough estimates believe that we have 10 to 14, that's 10 to 14 zeros behind it, bacteria in our stomach. That's roughly 10 times more human cells than we have in our body. And the definition of human flora is any microorganism that, you, that inhabits our body and uses either symbiotically or parasitically to their gain. And the human flora, of course, means such a massive amount of bacteria in us influence us in many ways. They synthesize the B vitamins, which improves the quality of life. They also educate the immune system to differentiate between pathogenic bacteria that cause us damage and neutral bacteria that pass through our system every single day. But most importantly, they form a carpet for bacteria that prevents other organisms, such as viruses, from inhabiting the area and colonizing. So that's actually pretty important to our survival. The renewed interest in human flora come from new technology we've gained. Before, we've been unable to study them due to them being in anaerobic conditions, which means when they're exposed to oxygen, they die. But new technology and new developments have allowed us to look at them in even more detail and discover how important they really are. Human flora has links, of course, being such a large amount of them, with certain diseases in the gastrointestinal tract, which is the area from the top of your stomach to the end. And um, one of the most interesting ones that come up is the link between an obesity, which certain findings have discovered that due to certain bacteria being in certain people's digestive tracts, it allows them to digest food much faster and increase weight. So it's not an excuse to eat pies, but it's a good reason why you can support it with science. The definition of probiotic, as given by the World Health Organization, is a live microorganism that, when administered in adequate amounts, confers a health benefit upon the host. And, and we're born with probiotics from the moment that we enter the world. When we are born, probiotics enter our mouth, move to the stomach, and colonize. And this has come from an evolutionary idea that if we have good bacteria on our stomach, it prevents the bad ones from getting in there and colonizing and causing damage to our body. Now, probiotics are different from antibiotics in the way that they cannot be chemically synthesized. They're all from natural sources. So, for example, the Nissel strain of bacteria, which is being used now to prevent food poisoning, actually came from studying a German soldier in 1941 who was immune to food poisoning in his barracks. And the mechanism is altering the human flora. So it either influences the already existing bacteria or recolonizes it if the amount is low. So it therefore you know, keeps everything going on down there. And we need to consider it as a treatment simply because at the moment medicine is shifting away from the standard, we'll have it and then we'll treat it. They found it much cheaper to run a course of antibi they found it much cheaper to run a course of probiotics on a human being than antibiotics, roughly three and a half thousand pounds cheaper. So the NHS needs time to consider alternate methods and probiotics has been such as one of them. Now I want to explain firstly why I went into this. I've got two videos to show you, which are the reasons I consider this as probiotic. Well, that's a little bit fun enough. <laughs> I just want to be appreciated, that's all. Well, I'm keeping regular with it. Oh, yeah. And the symptoms of probiotic overdose is bloating and gas due to the multiplying at such a huge rate that they overwhelm the gut and ferment and, you know, produce gas, which obvious results. And the reason these symptoms that I mentioned were over colonization. Also, irritable bowel syndrome, which is basically a stomach ache, is caused again by probiotics overdose, but because they colonize too far up the gut, they move into an area which they're not allowed into almost by the body, and so it inflames the response and causes an irritated bowel. But these side effects are minor, easily treated, and nothing too serious. However, there's risk of mutations. Now, as we all know, bacteria always mutate with MLSA and these super strains. But there have been cases of normal bacteria, the Lactobacillus strain, turning pathogenic, which causes Lactobacillus septicemia, which is an infection of the gut. And that is why the NHS has banned it 
in several hospitals because it believes it's too dangerous as a treatment for a sterile environment. And as I mentioned, sepsemia may occur and some believe it's not worth the risk. However, the chances of an organism mutating are very slim because for an organism to mutate at a fast rate, it needs a selection pressure like oh, antibiotics killing all the species. If we don't apply that, the chances of mutation are very slim. And it often attacks people with a compromised immune system, which leads me on to my next slide, complications caused. Now, there was a test taken in Uchet in um, Belgium, which asked the question, pancreatitis, ultimate treatment, which is an inflammation of the pancreatitis, to see if probiotics would work. And the results of starting the death rate was double in the probiotic group compared to the control group. And the reason of death was ischemic colitis, which you can see there. It's basically a heart attack of the gut, which means the blood vessels close, and it basically reduces the blood supply to the point it dies off, which isn't the most would have died. But they were all with compromised immune systems, so therefore, what I found from my studies, as long as you keep it away from people who have immune systems that could be easily infected and destroyed, then it's a very valid treatment. But in conclusion, I found that probiotics, as an older treatment, have a very good future. And so many people before us have asked me, is it just about Yakult, to be honest? <laughs> is it all about yogurt? And I hope during this presentation I've tried to convince you as best I can that it's not just about Yakult, which is a, a catch-all product. It's more about that. It's about specific trains, strains of bacteria treating specific diseases in specific cases. And therefore, I believe if we treat it as that, that it does have a useful cause in treating further illnesses of the gut. Thank you. I'll open myself to questions. Floor. <laughs> Well, it would depend on what I was suffering with. If I was suffering pancreatitis, then obviously no, because I would die. But <laughs> it's like with any, any cure for any disease, it's got certain links with certain other diseases. So I would ask for a, ra then like a ramless bacillus if I had diarrhea, let's say, because it's been proven to work. And I, yes, I would ask for treatment of probiotics because it's cheap, it's effective, and I found it to be you know, really cool. <laughs> yes? Um, so do you think we should uh, drink I think you should drink Yakult, yes, because it does influence the probiotic bacteria in the stomach. However, you shouldn't believe that it acts like a cure-all for anything in the gut. Certain strains do work, but it shouldn't be re overrepresented as a, you know, cure for diseases. Yes? Do you think sort of antibiotics and probiotics can work together? I don't think so, no, to be honest, because antibiotic, well, narrow spectrum, yeah, the ones that target specific bacteria, they could work because they would target specific bacteria. But the broad spectrum ones, which have been used too often, would just kill anything, including probiotics. So I believe the probiotics work best as antibiotic treatments. So if the bacteria in the stomach has been damaged so much by a broad spectrum, you would send probiotics in to deal with it. But I believe because they're so completely alternate treatments, one's trying to grow bacteria and just wiping them out. I can't believe they worked effectively as a together unit. Yes, I think. Um, did you encounter any problems when you were administering Well, I did find a very odd trend that a lot of Yakult related companies seem to want to sponsor these tests, but after triangulating the evidence and cross referencing it, I found the studies I believed were the, the least biased and the most representative of what the medical profession see probiotics as at the moment.
you can't take your fans on those questions. I know a few of them, but I know not all. So uh, that, you know, that, that is um, a real tough call. And I just think that you can leave this evening feeling really proud of yourselves. Um, I know Sam Seifer will really be proud of you. Um, and I think you can go away and think, yep, you've reached a new level in your learning journey. So um, well done. So thank you very much, everyone, for the presentation. Thank you.